I'm back with the Milk Boys. What is good everyone? Shubes here. It's been a minute, like two months. I've been quite busy with life stuff. I was in Japan for like a month and a half. Absolutely amazing time for a dirty weeb like me. And once I got back from there, I had to take all my stuff and move to my new apartment because of school. But I have finally settled in now and I am back. Today, we have something pretty damn crazy. I never thought I would see the day, but Razer actually came out with a more enthusiast-centric board and they asked if I wanted to check it out. I am a little late to the party since I had to move and stuff, but yeah, here it is. This right here is the... <coughs> I just inhaled my spit wrong. Oh my god. This right here is the Black Widow V4 75%. Now the Black Widow line of boards from Razer holds a special place in my heart because it was the very first mechanical keyboard that I ever bought. I think I got it in like 2012 and I legit used that thing for like 5 years straight. Was it any good? Not really, but honestly in 2012, where most custom keyboards were locked under like super niche Korean communities, there really weren't that many options. But nowadays, Razer really isn't talked about at all in the custom keyboard community because they aren't custom keyboards. That is until now. This board right here changes all of that and is the first addition for Razer into the custom sort of oriented market. Now, I wouldn't call this directly a custom keyboard since you know it comes fully pre-built, but the specifications of the board does cater to a more enthusiast level than other Razer keyboards, although I wouldn't say this is a super enthusiast level type board. But let's get started. Opening the board up, you can find the board itself, a little instruction manual I ain't reading all that um, oh you get a free wrist rest some cables and a keycap puller cool Yeet. Ooh, the wrist rest is magnetic actually that's pretty nice the board itself uh, it looks super razor. You can already see my fingerprints uh, destroying this board. But yeah, you can tell that this is a Black Widow from a mile away. It has a metal top and a plastic bottom with some kick up feet with dual sort of uh, levels. Very, very nice. I am actually a huge fan of kick up fit, fit, kick up feet. I don't know why. I think they are very based and uh, there's four gamers all over so you know this is some serious gamer business. <laughs> the board also has a little wheel and knob for volume control and two mappable buttons. You gotta download the Razer Synapse app though to uh, change these features uh, which is pretty cringe but you know it is what it is with Razer products. So now for the board itself. This board features a hot swap PCB. So yeah, this board features a hot swap PCB with 5 pin compatibility. The switches that came with it are these um, these new Razer uh, orange tactile switches. I'm surprised they went with a tactile option for a gaming keyboard. Uh, they are 3 pin, but um, the hot swap thing is... 5 pins so it will work with most aftermarket MX switches. The PCB sockets are sadly in north facing which means there might be some interference with cherry profile keycaps which sucks but using long pole switches could be a fix for that if you want nowadays. The mounting on this board is isolation gasket mount. Very standard but it comes with a FR4 plate which is pretty different from most pre-builds. The board also features the tape modding. <laughs> yeah, they actually, uh, they actually probably been reading Reddit or watching YouTube because they, they put tape on this thing, but it features tape modding of the PCB from factory, 
factory lubed stock stabilizers and uh, which are plate mounted but the board actually does have holes for screw in or clip in aftermarket steps although opening this up voids to warranty but who cares about the warranty anyways uh yeah these are the new generation 3 orange tactiles which come pre-lubed the lube job on this is pretty good with a pc top nylon bottom and palm stem with a 50 gram spring the tactile bump on this feels pretty medium not as light as mx browns but not as strong as like holy pandas board also comes with a built-in case foam and plate foam because we love foam and the board is currently available at razor and anywhere you can buy razor products for 189.99 with a full white colorway for 199 uh, later this month so i don't want to keep you guys waiting this is how the board sounds right now right out of the box no nothing i didn't touch anything i just corroded the metal with my hands but that is it So for the switches, we're going to go with these flower shadow switches. They're stock, but they're really good stock. They're produced by Beeson. And uh, we're just going to use 205 for the stabs. So for the stabs, I'll just be lubing the sides and the insides as well as balancing the wires so they are straight and lubing the wires as well. And I'll also be adding some band-aids right here. This is a very uh, old mod but it's to make it more secure and um, should be good for these plate mounted stock stabs because these honestly don't look that bad. So if you guys don't know, basically the band-aid sort of mod is just cutting the thin strips of band-aids. Uh, I prefer fabric uh, band-aids and just uh, cutting it into little strips and putting it here so the plate mounted stabs are a bit more secure. Alright, so all the mods are done. They were very, very simple and easy mods. Total probably comes up to around 30 bucks, no, 40 bucks ish with the switches. Um, you can definitely get cheaper linears or whatever switches you want, and uh, 205, that's all you really need. But let's see how this sounds uh, with just these mods. Okay, so what do I think of the board? It is surprisingly solid. I do think that Razer definitely put in time and effort in designing this thing to cater to a more enthusiast community, and it does what it is setting out to do very well. Modding this thing is also very simple. I think that internally, you don't really have to change much. It's a solid sounding board right out of the box with no ping or hollowness. The stock stabs are pretty good for plate mounted stabs. They don't need to be clipped, just doing the band-aid mod to make them more stable and adding some 205 gray zero and maybe balancing the wires will make them very, very good. Honestly, I don't have much complaints. The only thing that sucks is probably the north facing hot swap sockets and the fact that the warrant will be voided if you open this up to say maybe install screw in stabs 
As for the typing feel, it is quite stiff. There is a slight give if you push hard enough, but when actually typing, it's a overall very stiff typing experience. Um, yeah. For a widely available gaming pre-built, I think that Razer actually hit it out of the park with this board. It has a lot of features that people want in a gaming keyboard such as RGB, high 8000Hz polling rate, N key rollover and etc. And it sounds and feels good right out of the box. Compared to any other Razer or gaming pre-built you would find except maybe that one Asus board but I haven't tried that one so I can't comment. So as a pre-built in general, out of the ones that I've tried, this thing is probably one of the best sounding ones for sure. I think it beats the Keychrons in the straight out of the box sound department and it really performs well with simple mods. I would wholeheartedly recommend this to someone who wants a good gaming keyboard with the gamer aesthetics and customizations and maybe wants some modding capabilities that sounds great out of the box. It's a solid choice. Yep. That is that. Click out of the video if all you're looking for was whether this was a good pre-built because it is. Now we're going to go to the brain rot. So now let's discuss whether this is a good keyboard if you're a fully brain damaged custom enthusiast. Because although this board is catering to a more enthusiast community, for those that are deep in the keyboard hobby or want to really delve into the rabbit hole, bless your soul, I think there are much better options out there. Keychron is a obvious contender but boards like the Cycle 7 and many others are constantly popping up nowadays with prices that are in the sub $200 and even sub $150 categories with different mounting methods, more internal customizability and full metal construction with weights. Yeah, it, it's pretty crazy. So in terms of a enthusiast's point of view, this board is going to be pretty meh. It's not doggy doo doo terrible, but it's not really that great, and there are much better and cheaper custom oriented kits out there. In the end, it's not going to be really worth getting this board if you're someone that are looking to go fully into the custom route initially or if you're already in this hobby. However, with that said, the market that Razer is targeting is not the enthusiast custom community but rather the gaming community. And for that, this board is a great addition that brings in many of the things that we love in the keyboard hobby to a vastly more mainstream audience. If a completely new person picked this board up at maybe like a Best Buy and got into customs later down the line, we can still have fun with this board and upgrade it which is really great. Overall, I think that Razer really put a lot of thought into this. This is by far the best Razer keyboard that they have put out and honestly, it's pretty good.